Hello, I'm Jonathan Weiner. I'm Enrique Gonzalez Mir. And welcome to episode six of Are You Listening? The Mixing Series. All about automation and its emotional byproducts. Are we looking for automation as a ways to make things seem like they're dynamically uniform? Are we actually manufacturing some melodrama in there with your automation moves? Please join us for this episode and don't forget to subscribe to the Isotope YouTube channel so you'll be notified about future episodes from Isotope. So automation, as we've been doing, I'd like to lay down some concepts. Basically, automation is we have a process going on. It's fairly static. How can we modulate it to create either an emotional thing that wasn't there or maybe fix the technical issue? So let's jump in into this song that you might have heard before. So we've heard this song. Let's graduate from the chorus to the chorus 1B. Right. <laughs> we will get to the end of this song. So here to talk a little bit about level automation as a way to create dynamic uniformity. So here we have this guitar focusing on this chorus B. Mm -hmm. If we listen to it. We hear what the part is, and it's this ostinato da motif. Okay, so here you see I have a main guitar. There's some accents that together are making up a sound, and these are being bussed into this one aux channel. Here you see that there's a whole bunch of volume automation that I'm doing. And if you look at it, it's a lot of different little moves, but if you listen to the experience of the chorus, Tell me if you hear it jumping up or down, or rather, you just hear it going, hey, Jonathan, what's going on? We're going to have a conversation, and you're not going to have to squint or stand back for me getting too loud or too soft. So here it is with the automation on. If I turn this automation off, and you see here that we have a blue line that is not going to make the moves, it tells us this. Let's listen to this again. You hear it coming in and out. Mm -hmm because the arrangement around it is changing. If we go actually look at this, at this sound, and we see Neutron here, it has been compressed. And if you look at the output meter, see how not dynamic at all it is. We so, look at the peak level? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty uniform. So, what is happening here is I'm having to deploy level automation because I have a guitar that is here. Again, if this is really quiet and this is really loud, the guitar is here. But I have these vocals going. So they're getting in the way of me listening to the guitar. Why? Because it's too compressed. Hmm. Not too compressed, because it's very compressed and it doesn't have a lot doesn't of dynamic move. range. Mm -hmm. So this is something, this is a concept that I want to underline because a lot of people think if you compress things a lot, you will make them stand out. Mm -hmm. And they will be loud and present all the time, but it can start backfiring the symbiotic nature yeah. of the different sounds in the arrangement if I would have changed the send to the compressor, uh, the compressor is gonna start bugging out. So that's why I'm doing it post. We have things sitting well, everything is gelling together, but then perhaps as mix engineers, you see that there are parts of the song where your attention starts to wander. Mm. 
I think of mix engineers as movie directors a lot, right? And we have to do all these weird things to make it sound normal. So here we have this bridge section. Let's go. I'm going to give you four bars of pre-roll so you can kind of listen to the change of vibe and who leads your attention. Mm -hmm. Who's the protagonist? So to my cousins, yo cousins, who's uh who's the protagonist in the bridge? The vocals. Tu me das, tu me das, tu me das, tu me das, oh, tu. But it's tu me das, tu me das. Pause, 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 pause. So that pause is a moment for me, either of reflection. You're letting people digest what they the the stimulus they've ingested, or it's also an opportunity for them to get bored mm -hmm. and for their attention to wander. Mm -hmm. So as a mix engineer and as a producer and as a composer, I'm always thinking how, what is the frequency and potency of stimulus that I'm, that I'm delivering mm -hmm. to somebody to keep them with me. We are at the bridge. People have heard a lot. They're tired. So it's in my interest to keep their interest up. So what are the main things that I have in this bridge, the vocals and this keyboard? Right? If we listen, it sounds normal and transparent. But if we look under the hood, what's happening here is I'm deploying a lot of volume automation to basically at any time there isn't a protagonist from the vocal stimulus, I am really forwarding the presence of this keyboard so that your attention doesn't wane. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play it as is, and then we're going to turn the volume automation on so you can see how the experience changes. So this is the after. And again, it sounds normal. If we turn this off, with now that blue line, mm -hmm. no change in level. Here is how it feels. This is what a performer would do. If they were live and you're on stage yeah. and you have the, the keyboard is sort of the accompaniment, but there is the time to sort of fill in and then get out of the way of the vocals, right? So yeah. it's, it is reflecting, I think, what actually probably would happen during a great performance. Yeah. So wouldn't this be the thing that the performer does in a great live setting, right? Or in a great studio? My answer is not quite. Meaning, <laughs> not okay. quite in the sense that it's not that they couldn't do it, but let's think, for example, this keyboard was probably done before there were vocals in. Mm -hmm. So this keyboard player is not reacting to the vocals, oh. right? So this might have been just an overdub. Hey, right. send me some stuff. It might be that this particular patch doesn't have velocity. A number of things. The thing is that for me, a record is such an intricate, complex layer of things that for the player to think about their part and envision the ultimate mix and they, a lot of conversation would need to happen prior to this. Mm. Even me as the producer, which I made all of this stuff, these are things that I just came to afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know how I've been talking about balance and presence and dynamics in this axis, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I always think of the protagonist mm -hmm. as you set your monitoring level, again, universal sign for monitoring level, so that you can understand the protagonist. Mm -hmm. And this is the comfortable level. Right. If we have a conversation and I'm way back here, it feels weird if I go here, I'm leaning in too much, right? So for me, do I want this keyboard to be protagonistic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I push it to the level that it goes da 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 di da 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 di so that you can experience right. 
that uniformity. And that's what you see in video directing. Like if you were making a music video of this, you could almost, during this section, you could imagine a camera cutting and giving focus to both. Yes, to me it's that I am gently telling you to look that way or that way. Yeah. With love. <laughs> With love. New concept, manufacturing drama, Ooh. which is kind of an extension of this, but let's just push it a little bit further. So here we are coming out of this bridge, which is all dreamy, and we're getting to this, dare I say, fantastic guitar solo. <laughs> so let's listen to the transition. Right? So... Here, and I purposely have not done anything because I want to do it right in front of us now. So here we have these. Yo te doy. That yo te doy is what makes the transition. Here I have these distorted vocals. We want to go from dreamy to impact of the solo. But I don't want it to be an abrupt thing. I want to go, and we're here. The arrangement, the guitar solo is doing a bit of a lead in, but I want to add more drama. So here I'm choosing which one is the weirder sound, and it's definitely this one. So I am going to create a bit of a ramp up here. Again, I'm obviously on the volume automation lane here. I'm bringing this up very straight ahead. A mix is not a static thing. And again, going back to my beloved students at Berkeley, I see that I'm done with my mix and I go and see their automation lanes and there's very little to no automation. So I'm thinking, would you ever play guitar just like this all the time without dynamics? Probably not. This is your instrument. Hmm. So let's hear how I'm gonna turn this off so that we can hear the before and then the after. And then the after. Right, and we can get as hip with this as, as we want. We can make curves. Right, and, and get fun with it. Just to do a, a very quick shooting from the hip, this guitar solo was played by uh, yours truly. And it's intricate. It has a bunch of different little parts in here. But see how expressive is it on thinking about dynamics. So it has a bunch of information, but it's kind of flat. Mm -hmm. So here I would go and do a fun little volumation, volumation. That's a good one. So maybe throughout the whole range of the solo right there, I'm going to do a live pass at this. So let's improvise. <laughs> So there I already heard, I made a couple of changes that I already want to make. Maybe I went a little bit too far, but let's start from there. And here, how it used to be. So now the expression we have. To this first pass. To our heart's content, we can do passes of automation on, let's say, panning as well. So I want this to pan from one side to the other to give this little whale over here a little bit of a funner sweep. Why? 
et cetera, et cetera. So to me, just a little gesture to say that manufacturing drama is, guys, this is your instrument. You need to play your instrument with all the, the drama and nuance that, that you can inject into it. It feels like you're creating interest. Things for me as the listener to notice and be drawn in and be interested in mm -hmm. and follow. And again, it's like the director. Last one is to create emotional developments like we've been doing, but maybe just get a little bit weirder and, and, and creative here. So I was thinking we've heard this chorus about a squillion times. Mm. <laughs> and here at the end, we have an outro. We have a chorus that is twice the length. One fun thing that I'd like to do is change things unexpectedly, develop them. Mm -hmm. So here we have these high vocals. Do me the something, yes, do me the something. Right, and these are going to repeat. We've heard this a squillion times. Mm -hmm. The cat is out of the bag. We are spent. Mm -hmm. We want our listeners to get to the end, right? But they're like, dude, give me a candy bar. I don't have any more energy. What can we inject in there that would maximize the feelings we're going for, but that it would be a little bit unexpected? So think of what colors, and I'm just going to, what could we do to these vocals, for example? Starting here. Do you come up with any colors? <laughs> a flange. Modulate it somehow. Great. You know, some reverb. Uh, throw a harmonizer on. Okay, you said flanging? Yeah. You said delay? You said maybe reverb? Did I say delay? Yeah. One of these is going to be more conducive and help you in a more efficient way to, to achieve the emotion that you want. So I would ask you, what do you want people to feel? Because flanger is going to do is going to give you a different vibe than delay. I mean, the feeling for me was sort of um, something that would float a little bit more, that would create some motion, that would modulate. So this exercise, which I'm asking everybody to do, is go there, dream, of, dream up of something, have a, an intention as to why you choose that, and then go do it. For me, the song is a little cute, and it's this ticky ticky, and I want it to get a little scarier. I just want it to go like a little towards the end in a sweet way. So I am grabbing these <laughs> vocals. Scary in a sweet way? <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm going to distort these vocals. So I'm going to put trash here that I love, love, love. And I already kind of know some of the flavors here. And I love this acid preset. And you hear those high harmonics dee -dee -dee -dee, really, really pop out. I'm just going to play with this a little bit and then mix it in. And then we're going to automate some, some uh, parameters in here. So. Yeah, I'm, this is not the time to be polite, but it's harsh sounding. Mm. And the low end is also just getting a little bit out of control. So. That's a little better. Then maybe a little bit of a, uh, yes, I want it to get a little scary, but also a little bit kind of washy and dreamy. So da 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 da, -da uh, and we have a little bit of a splash. So I'm going to put a delay, hmm. and the delay, I'm going to make it, let's see, eighth notes. Yeah, something like that. And maybe feedback a little more. Great. Now let's put it in the track and I'm just going to pop it in just to see if um, I want to find where it's loudest. Meaning I want to place it in the right level, but it's going to be loudest at the very end. I want to do a fade in, but it's not going to be a level automation fade in. It's going to be a dry, wet fade in. So let's just nest it level 
proper. Mm. Yeah, maybe there is like at the end when it gets a little scary. So here, auto, and I'm going to do global mix, add, and here we have our automation lane for that. Right now it's at 100%, which is about where we're going to end up. So let's start it from the beginning so we can listen to it clean and see how this morphing sounds to the end. And if we need to, need to make any tweaks, we'll do them later. Here we go. You're coming to expect Great. And here, just to keep it instinctual, I'd like to start a little bit uh, quieter and have a more dramatic ramp up that happens. So here, this is the very end. And here we could go crazy with automating the feedback so we get that in the end and, and just have fun and now that the cat's out of the bag. So this to me is we manufactured some drama, that next level of playing your instrument, you know, growing mm -hmm. and really giving this thing some, some expression, treating it as an instrument. So there we go. It's a bunch of different concepts and as we've been underlining for everybody, I hope that these are not taken as, oh, trash too? Where do you push the button? But rather concepts that are applicable to any genre, any multi-track that you might encounter. So just if you're doing bluegrass, go for it. You know, you might just punch up the reverb a little bit on that bridge of the track to make it feel more nostalgic. It's the same stuff. So I hope that just people get curious, enthused, excited, and jump in and try these things. Cool. So there's the invitation to check out these products, try trial versions, see what life they can bring to your mixes, and 